Welcome to day two of the 30-day MREA. And today we are focusing on the pages of 40 to 46 up to the three L's. We're going to be discussing the, the three L's in this. So are you ready? Remember, read the pages, watch the video, and comment below your takeaways because what I'm sharing are the things that stood out to me. And as you share what stands out to you, together we'll all learn more. So in, in these pages, what we learn are we have two jobs, lead generation, then real estate. No matter what business you're in, you are in the business of lead generation. Prior to real estate, I was a marriage and family therapist, had a private practice for 22 years. And I had many, many uh, classmates going through graduate school who um, had the dream of becoming a therapist in private practice. Now, I always felt inadequate entering into graduate school because my bachelor's degree was in business administration. And then I went the route of a master's in marriage and family therapy. But boy, I'm glad that I did because I understood that the first goal of business was to get business. And so when all of my uh, fellow therapists, friends, and classmates were out there waiting to be lead receiving, in other words, people send me, I was out lead generating, and that's what built my business. And same thing for real estate. It's not a lead receiving business. It's a lead generating business. And how do we define lead generation? It's talk to a lot of people and have real estate conversations. And the good news is there are a lot of people. So the number one job that you have is lead generation and real estate. And lead generation comes before that. So in that, that's the first L in the three L's, lead generation. Then we have listings. Listings are the high leverage, maximum earning opportunity in our industry. They give you freedom. They give you the ability to control the market because the person with the listings controls the buyers and it's inventory on the shelf. Buyers are great and they are a job. You have to spend time showing them houses and going in and out and scheduling all of that. It's hard to be on the beach, enjoying the beach and show houses at the same time. As a matter of fact, unless you're omnipresent, you can't do that. However, you can enjoy the beach and have somebody else showing your houses um, because you have the inventory, you have the listing business and you can be on the beach or at your kid's soccer game or in Greece and receive an offer on your listing and still sell your inventory while you're not there. So that's the high leverage maximum earning um, L in your business. Now, a highly productive individual can personally obtain 15 to 25 listings per month. Do you believe that? Well, I, I want to stretch your mind. And the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book is stretching your mind to say, number one, am I highly productive? All busyness isn't business. And if you become and when you become highly productive and hone your listing skills, yes, you can get to where lead generating and listing abilities, you can take 15 to 25 listings every single month. Now, leverage is the third L. And the goal of leverage is getting the maximum amount of money for each hour invested. There's a, there are about 50 hours in a real estate transaction when you calculate everything that goes into it from getting ready to lead generate all the way to putting the money in the bank after the closing. And a solo agent, depending on the market, is going to average somewhere between 150 to 30, 150 to $300 an hour. Yet with leverage, admin leverage, transaction coordinator leverage, showing assistant leverage, buyer average, they can take that dollar per hour up to 500, 800, $3,000 an hour and maximize through leverage their dollar per hour worth. So something to consider there and you'll learn. So leverage, what are, what are we leveraged with? We leverage with people, systems, and tools. And I would probably inverse that and say we first learn to leverage with our tools. Are we using command? Are we using, a, a, are we using different technologies that will allow us to be more efficient? Then are we using systems to stay on track and 
Now are we using people? So those are the three things, people, systems, and tools to leverage. Nothing, nothing, and I mean nothing, comes before hiring and keeping talent when it comes to leverage. As a matter of fact, I've heard Gary Keller say that if you can close $7 million in real estate and you're not a millionaire, you don't have a real estate problem. You have a hiring problem. You have not mastered leverage. And so you're a technician who knows how to close deals, but you're not an entrepreneur who knows how to build a business through leverage. Keep that in mind. Of course, when we start leveraging, our first personal hire is administrative support talent. And we always do that first. I've seen too many agents want to rush headlong into hiring a buyer's agent. And that's a huge, huge expense. As a matter of fact, you're looking at um, a 50% cost of sale. And I've seen many agents that won't hire talent. And they are talented real estate agents and yet they are bogged down in the 80% of the work, which is 15 to $20 an hour work, administrative work, transactional work, but not realtor work, which is worth three, five, eight hundred $800 or more an hour. So you always want to hire administrative first so that you're moving those 15 to $20 an hour activities off of your plate and onto a hire's plate so that you can stay in the high dollar business and activities of the real estate agent. Now, there are four stages of growth and Gary Keller discusses this. Think a million, earn a million, net a million, receive a million, and in the coming updates to the MREA, there will be give a million. So those are the four or five stages of growth. People who push themselves to their limits make peace with their limitations and avoid regrets at the end of the day and at the end of their life. Here's the thing is, I want you to think big. I want you to push hard. And, and that's one of the topics that's discussed in these pages for day two. Too many people play small. They, they don't go for it. And at the end of the day, they think, what if I had done more? Push yourself to that limits. Find out how much you have in your tank. Find out how far you can go. How far should you go? As far as you can. Don't squander the talents and the resources you have by playing small. Go ahead and play big. You see, at the end of everything, you're either going to say, I'm glad I did. You're going to say, I wish I had. Or you're going to be like some of those that say, what just happened? And they were just clueless in life. So don't get to the end with regrets. Regrets weigh tons. Go for it and play big, all right? So go ahead and comment down below. Give your insights. Let us know what you're thinking, what you took away from these pages, and share with us what we can glean together, and then let's go about implementing those things. Day two in the books. I'll see you tomorrow.